Maria Goper-Meyer got her PhD in physics in 1930 after defending her thesis from skeptical colleagues. Universities refused to hire her, but fortunately her husband was a chemistry major and she got to follow him to conferences and attend labs. She was occasionally hired for feminine tasks, like figuring out which chemicals cause callers, but wasn't paid. Finally, the University of Chicago gave her a teaching job, but she was declined pay once again. Despite her hardships among a male-dominated scientific community, Goper Meyer pursued the question, why are some elements more abundant than others? One would think that elements with smaller atomic numbers would be more abundant, which is partly true, as hydrogen with one proton is the most abundant, and helium with two protons follows. But then comes the third most abundant, oxygen, with eight protons. Abundance of elements in the universe is based on nuclear stability, but what makes some elements, like oxygen, more stable than others, like lithium, which has three protons. If you're familiar with chemistry, you recognize number eight from the octet rule, or the general idea that atoms are most stable when they have eight electrons in their outer shell. Maria Goper Meyer wondered if the nucleus could hold shells for the protons and neutrons, which would explain why oxygen with eight protons is so stable. It turns out that the nucleus has other tendencies that remind scientists of electrons. On a graph with the x-axis being elements increasing in protons and the y-axis being energy to remove a valence electron or the ionization energy, a pattern emerges. As we move from left to right across the periodic table, the energy steadily increases to the noble gases who already have eight valence electrons and are therefore stable. Then, the energy drops down to the alkali metals, who are desperate to get rid of their one valence electron. This pattern continues down the rows. What is less known is that with a lot more energy, nucleons, which is another word for protons or neutrons, follow the same pattern. Not with the same elements or energy input, but you can still see the peaks and valleys similar to that of electrons. Goper Meyer pieced together other experiments that suggest that the nucleus has shells, and they form something called a magic nucleus, or the equivalent of valence electrons satisfying the octet rule. Then, there are these things called magic numbers, which is the number of nucleons needed to stabilize the nucleus. It doesn't follow a particular pattern like electrons do, though. Scientists have determined that magic numbers include 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and so on for protons. Now, Let's go back to the graph of the energy it takes to remove a nucleon versus time. Whereas in the electrons, the highest points were correlated with the noble gases, in the nucleus, the peaks correlate with the elements with protons that match the magic number. So the peaks occur at helium, oxygen, calcium, nickel, tin, and lead. This means that the troughs of the graph occur at the least stable elements, like holmium, which has 67 protons and hardly ever forms.